Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Virgo November 2018 horoscope forecast. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up is as far as November goes, the sun will be in Scorpio from the 1st until the 22nd. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, there could be a strong concentration of power, uh, focus, and attention on uh, communications, early education, siblings, cousins, neighbors, short journeys, uh, transportation, uh, and assimilating information. And given that this is a uh, Scorpio energy, this may be done with a lot of uh, Scorpio like emotional intensity, resourcefulness, uh, willful energy, digging very deep, going beyond subterfuge and superficiality with a lot of intractable energy and a lot of resiliency as well. And especially perhaps in matters uh, it, perhaps in your dealings with your cousins, your, your, maybe your, your neighbors, uh, siblings, if there's something that's not going, didn't go right in, in some matter in connection with them, uh, initially, you're apt to be able to bounce back and, and be able to deal with the situation, uh, better at afterwards at some point. And, um, there's some obstacle you might be trying to get through in connection with them. You can be very likely to overcome it later on. Now, also could be done with a lot of passionate Scorpio-like energy, and yet very secretively and very surreptitiously in some cases uh, as well. It could be in connection with maybe trying to get uh, some information if you're trying to dig deep, you're trying to get some dirt on somebody, so to speak, figuratively speaking. You understand what I'm saying. Next thing up. As far as November goes, the sun will be in Sagittarius from the 22nd until the 30th. So the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, there could be a strong concentration of power, focus, and attention on one's home, uh, their family, the end or the latter part of life, uh, emotional security, foundations, who you may be at the core, traditions, roots, ancestry, and the less dominant parent, which is often the mother. Now, this could be done with a lot of Sagittarius-like expansiveness, enthusiasm, exuberance, ebullience, a lot of effervescence, and a lot of jocular and jovial energy. You might find yourself doing things with a lot of, a lot of joking with people you're close at home with and a lot of focus and attention on that and, and really um, in, in people that are in your home, prominent in your home and your family life as well. And um, really also too with a lot of the veritable truth and truth seeking energy and matters going to really finding out who you are at the core as an example or digging into your roots and traditions not just done necessarily with a lot of expansiveness and optimism and positive sagittarius energy but really really strongly wanting to get uh, at the truth of these matters so anyway but at the same time guard against overly self-righteous energy as well in the process thinking that your way is the only way or the highway such as for example if there's some remodeling idea renovation connection with your home it's always important to be more on the say philosophical or more uh really hearing other people's uh thoughts and opinions on those matters so anyway next thing up there will be a new moon in Scorpio on November 7th, so the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, well, this could be the start of a new Scorpio writing or communication. This could be something where it might be connected with mystery, the macabre, something with the supernatural, astrology even, some kind of writing you might be doing at this time you might start. And also, uh, this could be in some cases perhaps a new Scorpio, a sibling, cousin, or neighbor, or someone you may meet in a new, uh, in a short journey, or one you may, person you may reconnect with from your uh, early education. It could be a Scorpio, sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply one that embodies Scorpio-like characteristics. It also could be a new period of very deep, profound, provocative conversation. And it's, and also in um, some cases, a new mystery. Uh, in the neighborhood and 
A lot of this could depend on like the aspects and how this mystery goes. If there's something does happen in your community, if there's something connected with some crime, if this say this makes an adverse aspect to your natal Neptune, it could be one that could be very confounding and confusing and very unclear and a little bit harder uh, to solve. A good aspect to Jupiter could be where you might be able, to, you have a little better chance of getting to uh, the bottom of it, or it could even be a mystery in some other third house matter. It could be even something with your vehicle that might be very uh that might be very well befuddling very mysterious and you're having a hard time figuring out what could be actually going on with it and also perhaps taking short journeys into very uh mysterious uh areas in your neighborhood uh perhaps so anyway next thing up there will be a full moon in Gemini on November 23rd, so the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, in some cases, this could be about the completion or culmination of a Gemini-like career. It could be something with communications, such as satellite data communications. There's journalism, broadcasting. And at the same time, remember, when you have a full moon, this could be in, in full moon in Gemini. In this case, it could be very, you might become tired, full, exasperated at a rather a mercurial, vacillating, even gossiping, two-faced, overly, overly loquacious. Um, it could be a dominant parent, an authority figure, someone prominent in your career. It could be like that nosy, inquisitive, busybody, or somebody that just got constantly gossiping about things about you in a very negative fashion. Now, also too, uh, this could be the conclusion or culmination of some writing that might give you some notoriety and recognition and may play a role in improving your stature in life and social status. This could be something, too, where when we're talking about a full moon, I see this as a lot of full emotional energy, and this could be very powerful. It could be, well, it could be something where you put a lot of that full energy uh, into doing, into versatility and showing dexterity, perhaps in your career or some matter with an authority figure, a dominant parent. Um, and also, too, uh, this could also be about a revelation or unveiling about somebody that may be involved, uh, prominent in your public image, your reputation, career. That could be, again, the gossiping thing and being overly, uh, it could be overly inquisitive, overly nosy, or somebody that's just very uh, two-faced and two-sided in character. So anyway, well, the next thing up is uh, Mercury will be in Sagittarius. It will be retrograde from the 17th until the 30th. And the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, uh, this could be about very, uh, some cases, some very jocular, jovial conversations with the home and family members. You might find yourself talking about sports, religion, philosophical discussions with them. Given it's going to be retrograde for about half the month, you might find yourself going back to those discussions and maybe even reviewing your thoughts a little more before you're speaking this veritable uh, Sagittarius-like truth with these people, people that you're also close to home with as well. And also, too, um, as I've stated previously, that Sagittarius, I mean, Mercury can uh, be more than just be about communications. It could also be about siblings. Uh, in some cases, this could manifest perhaps in Sagittarius siblings figuring prominently more in your home and family life, in your emotional security, maybe helping you get in touch with your roots uh, and ancestry. Perhaps they could be Sagittarius sun, moon, or ascendant people or simply ones that embody Sagittarius-like uh, characteristics. And also could be about going to, in the, in the uh, retrograde period, going back to ideas perhaps to expand uh, the home and also a lot of positive, optimistic thinking about your latter part of life, that end of life period that you, you want to be. And if you're already in there, it might be where you're really, you might be thinking even more positively than perhaps you were uh, before. And if you're not there, then you're thinking more futuristically, of course, uh, regarding it and thinking more positively and upbeat in terms of where you want to be at that time. Anyway, next thing up is, well, uh, Venus will be in Libra. Uh, so the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. It will be retrograde from the first until the 16th. Now, this could manifest perhaps in a lot of uh, balance spending uh, regarding possessions, resources, 
um, at this time and, and just in and just in general and really uh, doing things where uh, you, you look at this too this could also be about uh, in some cases this could be about uh, a vein a Libra relationship that may be coming back if you are unattached Virgo it could be one that you might have had a, a connection with previously and might figure prominently in your in monetary matters in your self-esteem and self-worth of course I'm talking about during the retro period and it could be a Libra Sun Moon or Ascendant or simply one that embodies a Libra like characteristics it could be someone very charming uh, very diplomatic amiable very very sociable person uh, as well uh, this could also in, in some cases this could manifest perhaps in, in doing enjoying Libra like things perhaps with people uh, that you met you might generate income with it could be at your job it could be doing playing some kind of Libra a uh, game like something like a law and order game or something like people's court something that could be Libra related or doing even artistry something with it could be sculpting painting or drawing something that you might enjoy that could be Libra related uh, with those people so anyway hold on a minute people sorry about that anyway next thing up is um, as far as uh, November goes Mars will be in Aquarius from the 1st until the 15th so the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time well, you might find yourself having uh, some unpredictable uh, spontaneous arguments uh, it could be at your people at your place of employment prominent in your health life and your daily routine you might see yourself becoming angry at idiosyncratic bizarre even unusual behavior perhaps from an aunt and uncle or uncle at the place you work perhaps it could be even someone you render service to but on a positive note this could also manifest perhaps in injecting a lot of humanitarian and selfless energy into your daily routine and someone you may provide service to it might even and also might even be an aunt or an uncle and a lot of that selfless energy into a pet if you do have one now also um, in some cases this could be um, becoming more angry and maybe acerbic situations with friends in your daily might become being your daily routine on a, a day-to-day -day thing during this time and also um, and it could be fights with friends over worrisome issues because six house is, is really like the house of worry because the six house does correspond uh, with Virgo and Virgo well you, I mean Virgo is a sign that has the propensity to worry of course so anyway you might find yourself getting into possible more greater propensity for accidents at work or maybe doing some workout routine something that's health related and it might be some injury perhaps to your shins or ankles at this time so anyway next thing up as far as November goes Mars will be in Pisces from the 15th until the 30th so the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time well you might find yourself becoming angry and acrimonious over duplicitous deceptive overly passive indolent behavior perhaps from a significant other it could be a grandmother uh, some important connection you may be involved in it might even be somebody that might be in uh, a business partnership where you suspect maybe something shady may be transpiring there and also putting you could find yourself putting a lot of uh, energy perhaps into a Pisces like uh, competition it could just be something simple as like video gaming doing some Dungeons and Dragons games something that could be Pisces related even dancing or even swimming something that could be uh, that could be a Pisces related um, thing uh, and also too if you're unattached Virgo you might first find yourself fulfilling some kind of sexual fantasy perhaps um, in connection with somebody in a seventh house type field such as an attorney 
or, or it could even be maybe someone in some other uh, legal uh, profession. It could even be maybe with the with an open adversary, somebody that you might reconcile with that maybe was a previous open adversary and wind up having a sexual interlude with him or her. But at the same time, when Mars in Pisces, this could be a lot more about fantasizing as opposed to taking action. And that could, of course, apply to seventh house matters such as legal matters, dealing with open adversaries, matters connected with a significant other, or some kind of negotiations or compromise that needs to be uh, made and, and worked out, some reconciliation perhaps. But also on a positive note, this could also manifest in injecting a lot of self-sacrificing and compassionate energy into others in for others in general and matters connected with others. So anyway, Next thing up is, well, Jupiter will be in Scorpio as far as November goes, from the 1st until the 8th. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, uh, this could be a positive period for luck and fortune, perhaps through making maybe making a transformation in your neighborhood or something that could be third house related, such as like a vehicle, something connected with transportation, or maybe even recycling in your neighborhood. Also, it could be very fortuitous for going beyond subterfuge and superficiality in your communications, matters connected uh, with siblings, with cousins, uh, neighbors, perhaps. And also, this could be very positive for deciphering the character composition and motives of others, such as your neighbors, um, your siblings, and uh, could be cousins, people that are prominent in your uh, short journeys and in your uh, communications uh, and also even people you may know in your early, from your early education. Now it also could be very uh, beneficial for some kind of Scorpio uh, like writing is something with the mystery, the occult, the supernatural, astrology, uh, something uh, that could be connected, um, something with death perhaps. Uh, this could also be a time to where you just really put a lot of enthusiasm and exuberance into something Scorpio like uh, with your with your neighbors, with your siblings, with your cousins. And so it could just be something simple as getting to the bottom of, uh, of some mystery, perhaps. So anyway, next thing up. As far as November goes, Jupiter will be in Sagittarius from the 8th until the 30th. So the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Uh, this could be about really, um, as I've talked about previously, Jupiter can be uh, very paradoxical. It's very uh, strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand. Now, in some cases, this could expand and enlarge self-righteous, foolhardy, over-optimistic uh, behavior. Uh, perhaps from a home or family member, someone you're close at home with. It could be the less dominant parent, which is often uh, the mother. But on the positive side, this could be about a lot of enthusiasm and exuberance and perhaps uh, Sagittarius-like traditions. It could be something with sports or exploration or camping. Uh, perhaps and also injecting a lot of enthusiasm into your uh, maybe even in, into maybe some foundations uh, as well and, and really maybe just about being very honest and speaking that Sagittarius like uh, veritable uh, truth. So in any way, uh, this is also a time too. This could be fortuitous perhaps with the for the expansion of a home, adding some, and just maybe adding something to it or like a sports, something that, and also maybe doing things that are very enjoyable, that you have a lot of enthusiasm with associated with sports, uh, with home family members, people that you're close at home with. So anyway, next thing up, Saturn will be in Capricorn still, so the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, well, Virgo, you might be experiencing some restrictions and limitations and matters connected with your fun, amusement, and enjoyment. You might find like you're just everything you may be doing at this time or virtually everything is all about maybe all work and no play. You might find yourself maybe taking care of a sickly or debilitated lover or child at this time or someone prominent in your fun amusement and enjoyment and it could be made could be something capricorn related such as something with the knees the bones and the joints 
and uh, and maybe making you feel somewhat melancholy and despondent. This could also be about taking a lot of serious responsibilities toward the latter part uh, of your life um, at this time and, and really getting the preparation for it doesn't mean you're at, um, I'm sorry, I'm saying it's not the end of the life. I'm sorry, we're talking about the fifth house, my bad. Could also be about taking a lot of serious responsibilities to your fun, amusement, and enjoyment, to matters pertaining to children, uh, to your uh, romantic life as well, and also about giving structure and discipline uh, as well in fifth house matters. It could even be some responsibility to some gambling debt, uh, perhaps. And also, in some cases, this could manifest perhaps in some government restriction might be prohibiting you from some fun or enjoyment, uh, uh, perhaps at this time. And also, uh, you might find yourself trying to work very laboriously uh, to attain personal popularity, but it could also be some restrictions and limitations uh, you may feel uh, at this time uh, as well as far as that goes. So anyway, well, um, hold on a minute again, people. Sorry about that, back again. Next thing up. Uranus will be in Taurus as far as November goes from the 1st until the 6th. So the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. This could be about the formulation of um, perhaps new ways uh, to make money that might help you with ninth house matters such as higher education or traveling abroad. You might find at this time that maybe in-laws, grandchildren might be showing a lot of unusual persistence and obstinacy in the case of the stubborns. Uh, also at this time, it could be manifest perhaps in Taurus friendships at this time might play a stronger role in your philosophical outlook, your um, your uh, religion, uh, mat religious matters perhaps. Uh, it could be in traveling abroad, your higher education. They could be Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Taurus-like characteristics. You might also uh, see yourself at this time taking maybe a college course that could be Uranus-like. It could be something um, connect, could be something with electronics, computers, aerospace, astronomy, something with uh, perhaps astrology or some other esoteric subject. I don't know if they actually have uh, accredited astrology courses at actual colleges, but you could still, I'm sure there are courses at least online that can be taken. Now, anyway, um, and also too, you might find it at this point in time, you might find maybe some unusual behavior uh, from ninth house uh, people at this time, and such as your in-laws, grandchildren, people at a religious congregation. And also you might find yourself adopting a very non-conforming or unorthodox philosophy at this time. So anyway, next thing up. As far as November goes, Uranus will be in Aries from the 6th until the 30th. So the 8th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Well, some cases this could be about dealing with some kind of unusual uh, credit card activity. Uh, moral, emotional, monetary support could be very unpredictable and sporadic and erratic. Uh, you might be making some kind of electronic or some kind of computer uh, transformation that's associated with electronics or computers. I mean, it could be uh, working out vigorously, but doing so using very state-of-the-art uh, computer and electronic uh, equipment. And it could also be using your ingenuity to deal with some kind of, kind of crisis at this time. And also, Aries friendships might figure... Uh, more prominently, uh, perhaps in crisis issues, good or bad, depending on aspects that are made. Um, but, and they also might figure prominently, perhaps in moral, uh, emotional, monetary support, maybe dealing with, helping, maybe figure factory in matters with taxes uh, as well, and other eighth house uh, related matters. And it could, they could be Aries, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Aries-like characteristics. Now, it could also be a time where you might have some kind of uh, deal with some kind of unusual, maybe uh, sexual relationship 
uh, during this time. It could be uh, it could be something where you may um, you may do something where it, where you might be connected uh, with somebody that could be um, in some Uranus-like uh, profession, perhaps. Uh, that you might be in, in a sexual relationship with or intimate relationship with. It could be somebody that could be you know, somebody in astrology or aerospace or innovation or someone with computers or electronics. But it could also indicate that this could be uh, somebody that might even be a foreigner that you might decide to have, um, that you might have a, decide to have a deep connection with. So anyway, next thing up. Neptune will be in Pisces still, so the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Well, Pi, I mean, I have this actual, I have Pi, Neptune in my seventh house in my natal chart, and it's really, it's almost like the constant perpetual dissipation and dissolving in our relationships. But when you have this energy, Neptune in Pisces in the seventh house, uh, you're dealing with, you could be dealing with at the time, uh, dissipation, dissolving of relationships. Uh, you might have the unfortunate tendency to be attracting people that might be involved in dr recreational drugs and or alcohol. And it makes it more difficult to decipher others' motives and really, uh, and also the character composition of others. They might appear very nebulous and unclear to you, but at the same time, and on the positive note, you might give an inclination for public speaking on the metaphysical, which could include um, astrology, you might find yourself showing a lot more self-sacrificing energy in your relationships, doing a lot for others, but not necessarily getting a lot of reciprocation in return. And it might even be where you might be dealing with a lot of deception and duplicity from seventh house people, such as a grandmother. It could be uh, a significant other, someone you're in a business partnership with, uh, perhaps, and also even open adversaries, the open enemies, there might be something about them that might even be rather uh, unclear and nebulous. You might not even see them as clearly as you would uh, ordinarily. So anyway, um, and also it could be about some kind of Neptune-like competition that you might be getting involved in. It could be something connected with like video gaming, something of a fantastical nature. It could be something like Dungeons and Dragons game, something that could be uh, Neptune-like uh, at this time. So anyway, last but not least, Pluto will still be in Capricorn, so the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, you might find yourself, um, in some cases, I know a lot of you don't want me to say the dreaded D word, but you know I'm going to anyway, could actually reflect a, a literal death of a child, a romantic partner, someone that is prominent in your fun, amusement, and enjoyment. Uh, it could have even been somebody that you may have been close with that had a strong impact on your personal popularity. But at the same time, sadly, this could be about the obliteration, maybe in some cases, of a, of a, a love connection, perhaps, of a maybe just a general connection with the child, or maybe it's, it really, um, you're, you might feel as if your fun, amusement, enjoyment might be obliterated and destroyed at this time. But keep in mind, just remember that Pluto is also about regeneration, rebirth. If something is destroyed with Pluto, it can often be supplanted with something else. Something you might be feel, feel this time you've been deprived of that was very enjoyable to you might be supplanted with something else at a later point. You might find yourself dealing with upheavals and power struggles with children with a romantic partner. You gotta guard too against perhaps a, maybe even compulsive gambling issues at this time. And in things of a, a speculative uh, nature as well. So I mean I know in some way, in some cases this could just be about getting maybe power uh, through through doing these things, through doing things of a speculative nature, uh, but at the same time be careful because it also can be something where it could be a, a really a, more of a compulsive issue. And a lot of times this could depend on whether, you know, depending on aspects this makes to other points in your chart. If this, say if this makes, um, you know, an adverse aspect, say, to, to Venus, the money planet, or even Jupiter, which is the luck planet, it could have maybe a very 
uh, negative impact and it could result in some kind of losses. So, uh, and I would say even especially with, with Venus being that is that money plan or if it's making even adverse aspect to your second house cusp at this time. So anyway, people, uh, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Virgo November 2018 horoscope forecast. Stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Libra uh, November 2018 horoscope forecast. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.